Hi, everyone. Carmen Disco here for Get Retail Ready on the Launch Network. We've got an awesome show today. I'm going to try to stop using the word awesome. I seem to be using it too much, but our guests are the best that we can find. It's really cool. And I'm going to bring the host, the man of the hour on, Mr. Jim DeBetta. What's up, Jim? Hey, what's going on? It's happening, man. I, I'm using the word awesome too much these days. I know. I'll have to go back to old podcasts to see how many times you, we'll have a <laughs> click counter on it and see how many times you're using it. But it's all right. It sounds good. I guess maybe if you didn't bring attention to it, it probably would have just yeah, sounded sure. great. But see, look what you've done. And now we've got now we've got a problem. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I see you got your green screen. Awesome. Yeah, I'm saying it's always I've gone to the um, pale white. <laughs> Uh, non-offensive you can say nothing about it background and it's going to stay like that for a while until i change my attitude and put something else back there you know how that's going to be yeah, yeah. No, none, yeah, of I get, the, I get, none of the extremists could say anything about your background no i get picked on a lot and, but um <laughs> yeah so anyway uh yes we do have a great guest on um somebody i've known actually a long time many years i come i know you know him uh, his name is Mr. Steve Greenberg, and we're going to introduce him in a second. But you know, look, he—he's a TV star. We're not—we're not—we're not, we're not, we're not uh, podcast or TV stars by any stretch of the imagination. Although we've appeared on a few things, but yeah. Steve's a regular, um, and where he's going to tell us all about what he's up to. We're going to talk a little bit about product. He's got some new things going on. He's got a YouTube show going on. He's—he's he's always busy. I see him in my feed. I don't want to say way too much, but I guess that's a good thing. He's always around. He's always visible. He's always doing his thing in the world of products. And um, he's an industry guy for sure. So let's introduce him. Steve, good morning. Good morning, guys. Great to be here. And uh, it's awesome to be here. <laughs> See, you'll see what's going to happen. I think that's, that's our buzzword. I want to get counted on the count. Awesome. That's right. Nice. And it is awesome. It's awesome that he's saying awesome in the comments is awesome all the time. That it's just awesome all around. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's get this out. Oh, let's get no. this out of the way. <laughs> I'm going to give away a free gift if one of the listeners writes in and tells me how many times they heard all of us say it. <laughs> that, right. Then we'll know at least people are listening to the show. That's good. That's right. At the very least, you know, people are tuning in. So, all right. Hey, Steve, before we even get started, you're an industry to us anyway, for sure. And others, you're an industry icon. You've been around this business of product forever and being on TV all the time, being on a morning show, an afternoon show, any show that you're on. And we want you to tell people a little bit more about where you are all the time, because look, it's best coming from you. We also want to hear about your new YouTube show, but we also want to get a little bit into what makes a product great and what makes a product stand out, especially when you have to be involved in choosing products that go on national TV and, and what things excite an audience and what people react to. So if you want, Steve, just give us a little bit more about what you are, what you're doing, what you're doing on a regular basis, and then we can chat about your new YouTube show. I'd appreciate it, Jim. Yeah, well, I started as a TV news reporter and my beat was health and science. I did that for a long time with CBS. And then uh, I left TV news because I wanted to try some other stuff and I did home and garden television and I did discovery channel and in discovery channel, I did a show called your new house. And I, I did a segment called check this out, which was just about gadgets. And my dad had been a very much a, a gadget guy. My older brother was a gadget guy. He, they both had patents. So I was like, you know, I really love that niche. And it just, it, it fit. It's like doing, first of all, for t TV, it's great because it's all show and tell. And the other part about it is that you got so many cool people you meet and you're, you know, it's, they're all life changing moments. You, know, you start off as a school teacher and then you create a product and all of a sudden you're an entrepreneur. And uh, there were great stories in there. So I tried to push that as its own TV show, Gadget Nation, which didn't happen, but it did become a book and it did rather well. And today's show saw me, had me on to promote the bo book. Uh, Lester Holt said, come on back more often. So I did. And, and I've been doing the Today Show for like almost 10 years now. So that's a, a somewhat regular gig. And um, I also have started over the last something, I don't even know how many years, I have a bunch of TV stations around the country that I used to fly to and visit one after another. Uh, I would do that almost, you know, finish one tour and then start another one and did that for years. And then since the pandemic, I've been, you know, stuck at home like the rest of the planet. And now the stations are doing it over Zoom. 
So I'm still doing TV segments for TV stations, but instead of actually having to go there, we do it the way we're doing this podcast right now. So it's kept me pretty busy. As you mentioned, during this lockdown, I uh, came up with a game show that I wanted to see if I can see if it takes off. I think it's another great platform for inventors to showcase their products. It's called, here's shameless plug number one. <laughs> what the heck is that? And uh, if you go to gadgetgameshow.com, you can check it out. But we've got 34 episodes up already and hopefully more to come. Uh, hopefully there's a sponsor out there that will want to be aligned with this. So if, if you're a sponsor, you're listening, call me. <laughs> and, uh, and, that's, and, that's, and that's sort of my niche, but I, I've been on the UIA board. I've spoken to almost every inventor association in the country, if not everyone. Uh, I've, every trade show, I'm pretty much at, a fixture at, so a lot of judging. So I really feel like I'm, at this point, I've got my cred and I've been you know, doing this for a while. So I feel I really do know the inventor space pretty well. Yes, you, you do have your cred for sure, more than most. Hey, Steve, listen, I know that when people email me or message me or call me about their products, of course, outside of just getting their product out there commercialized into retail or getting it licensed, the other right behind it thing that they always are excited about, of course, is being on TV, being on the Today Show or any other show for that matter. They'll take any TV they can get. But of course, a show like the Today Show is really, you know, the cream of the crop, so to speak. It's really it's big time. So I want you to take us into as much as you're allowed to, of course, we understand how that can be. There's just certain things you can say and you can't say. But I know a lot of people would want to know when people submit a product, how do they get chosen? Who decides? What's the criteria? How does all that work behind the scenes? Give people a little bit of what goes on that they really just couldn't find out on their own on the internet, if you could. Absolutely. So first of all, I think it's sort of specific for each not only person, but also for each segment. So my segment, for example, on today's show has certain parameters. They, we do mostly gadgets. I'm going to, so I don't do tech. I'm not going to be showing a new phone. I'm not going to be showing a phone accessory. I'm mostly going to be doing gadgets, which means it doesn't have to plug in, doesn't have to have batteries. And it's usually a, a mom. A lot of my products are mom pop um, garage inventors for, I haven't found the right term to explain what, you know, the, the our niche that we're talking to right now. Uh, and for me, I used to years ago, get all this information, create, you know, files. And, and then after I went, became digital files. Now I've thrown all of that out. It just was too much to keep track of. So now basically what I do is I work it in reverse. As I get a segment theme, I post it on my social media. I, I put a hashtag segment theme and I'll say I'm looking for backyard gadgets under $100, which by the way is what I'm looking for right now. And then I get a bunch of responses. I kind of pick through what I think fits and might be fun to demonstrate. And then I pass that along to the producers and they ultimately pick the final six or seven of what they want on the show. And you know they know the Today Show viewer, and that, in my case, it's Today Show. So they really know who she is or for the most part who she is. And, uh, and they're trying to find what she'd like. Now, a big issue for a lot of people is that my products usually are under $100. I say 120 because I see they kind of break that rule a little bit, but they really want it affordable and they want it. It has to be something you can purchase now. It can't be a prototype. It can't be in crowdfunding. It has to be available for, to consumers now, not necessarily in a retail store, but at least on your website or somebody's website. Okay. So in essence, if I submit something to you, really, you're the, you're the front middle and almost the back line of everything like there's someone at the today show one of the one of the people somebody over there is going to make a final decision but i would imagine that your decisions based on these handful of finalists have a lot of weight because they're relying on you you're the you're the show expert here right well i mean i can say so what i do is i submit to them so i'll probably get 400 ideas that'll come to me okay. i'll narrow it down to maybe 35 that i think i like of the 35, I'll probably pick 10, but I put little stars next to it, I think that are better. But then the producers, I mean, not to take anything away from them, they ultimately make the final six or seven decisions. So, you know, I never make that final cut. They, they make the final cut. I've argued it with them sometimes. Right. And I've also learned not to give them something I don't want them to pick. So I try to, you know, do that. But ultimately, um, you know, they do make the final pick. Also, they know something that I don't know. They, you know, are 
you know, more consummate viewers of today's show than I am. So they know if something's been on, you know, a week ago, Thursday. They also know if it's on the third hour or the fourth hour, it was on weekend already. You know, there's way too much today show for me to keep track of all that. So they're doing that too. So they know if it's a repeat product or not. And, and even with that, I know we make mistakes occasionally. Right. Okay. So the so out of all the starred items, I'm just playing with you, of course. We got to yeah, have yeah, fun yeah. with this stuff, right? Out of every, say every 10 times you submit a batch of products that are starred to the people at the uh, at the Today Show for your segment, how much, what percentage, like, is it like, 80 to 90 percent of the times the things you pick they're going to pick or is it really <laughs> I wish I could tell you I would love to say you know I pick it and they and they, <laughs> they I, honestly it's almost comical because I, I'm, I'm I keep a track of it myself because I'm just kind of nutty that way yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm hitting about 50 percent frankly oh, you know that's not, so, that's not it's not bad so of the 10 I pick maybe four will actually get into the segment and there'll be four others that I didn't pick. I, and I do it mostly just to keep seeing what, and you know, it's also different, you know, it goes up to, it goes up the line and that line isn't a straight line, you know, depending on who's on vacation, who's not, it could be looking at, you know, there's different producers who go this way, this way, and they all have different things in their life and they make the decisions based on their own life. I mean, I hate to say it, mm. but it's true. Yeah, well, if they're having a problem with something in their house and there's a product there that might be, you know, solve it, or they can see it being useful. They're all about that product, even though I'm like, why would you want that? So it, there, there, it isn't as, 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 uh, and I really don't, I don't wield the power. I wish I did. I wish they would let me make more decisions. But after all these years, I've learned that, you know what, this is the way it's done. And, and that's the way it is. So I let them make those decisions. Hey, Steve, uh, Steve, real quick. Um, and, and to me, you know, you and I, and we're, we are gadget guys. We like making things, but we do it for retail sales and things like that. But what it seems like is the producers are doing it for entertainment purposes, right? Absolutely. But I have to say, I'm doing that too. I mean, for them, yeah. I'm doing that too. And I'm not really trying to sell the product. That's uh. not my job. My job is to have an interesting segment where you're like, wow, ooh, interesting. <laughs> and, 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 and even when I wrote the book Gadget Nation, I picked a lot of those products based on they'd be fun to demo on TV. I always had a TV angle in my head because I'm a, a TV guy. I'm not really a book guy. So, you know, if... A, and, but what's interesting, and this is kind of the takeaway that I've learned over the years, if it's fun on TV, I'm not the only one who recognizes that. All the guys and gals who do what I do recognize that, and so do producers. So you're going to get a lot more free press. You'll need, you know, you'll spend less on PR because your product will have legs. If there's something silly or interesting about it or, or even a clever name, some of those things just all fall into place where it's like, you know what? Everybody wants to talk about that product. So, uh, and, and Gadget Nation is a great example in that. I picked 107 products for that book. And shockingly, so many of them have done surprisingly well, even though some of them maybe don't deserve or do well. And it's not because they were in my book. I'm not giving myself any of that credit. It's because other people recognize they were fun products for TV and had kind of an interesting twist. So they, they've had legs. They've got, you know, they've just gotten a lot of free press. So it's done better than it. I mean, one of my products was bird diapers, which again, you know, how could you not <laughs> want to talk about bird diapers? And so it was in the book. And then I did it on a Today Show. I mean, I've done that product so many times because people want to hear about it. So, you know, it's even more than I want to talk about it. It comes out, I've done it on the game show and, and it's always a hit every time. Wow. So um, you can't go wrong with bird diapers. <laughs> the, uh, I'm uh, going to let Jim take over. So, I love seeing you when you were doing it live. Obviously, you love live television, being in the studio. One is I've seen hosts and you do some crazy stuff with some of the products. But also, it seems like you're general, genuinely having fun with the hosts, with the products. Well, first of all, I think that's the secret to good television is not to be too aware that you're doing it. It's both about having fun. And if you're having fun, they're having fun. Um and Kathy Lee Gifford, I used to say, I, you know, she's not on the show anymore, but the years I worked with her, she was such a great teacher about just like throw out the cards, <laughs> throw out the questions and let's just do it. And, and there's one example, which did very well on the internet. We had this silly, um, I forget the name of it, which is terrible I'm doing that, but it was like a thermos for drinking, but it had a suction on the bottom of it. So when you put it down, it, it wouldn't knock over that easily. It's great for an RV. And if you, when you grabbed it, it released the suction, very clever design. So I got like 20 of them, all different colors, lined them up. I said, you know, this, what's great about it is they don't knock over. And I kind of like went like that. And then she just took her hand and she just whipped it. And the things flew over the studio. 
my phone was in my back pocket. I could hear, I could feel it immediately vibrate as the owner of the company was like losing his stuff over it. He's like, ah! And, and she was like, you know, going crazy over it. But that clip got, you know, a couple of million views on yeah. YouTube. So <clears throat> it, it, it had a lot. And she, I give her total credit. She had the insight to know who cares. It's yeah. not about selling a product. It's about having fun. And ultimately the product's done very well also. So that's the good news there. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, bird diapers. Okay, let's. <laughs> so, you know, Steve, here's the thing. And you, you say, you've said a few things that I think really have to, re they should resonate with inventors because, a lot of inventors, it is an emotional journey. People get very, they get very upset when things don't go well or when things don't go as planned. And Carmine and I always talk about what you have to do. There's an order in which things happen, but expect the unexpected. But when you're on TV and something is on TV, it is entertainment first and foremost, because the goal of TV is to get people to watch this and dollars involved. And it's a business, just like the Inventing is a business. TV is a business. When I worked with Kevin Harrington on Shark Tank and we were screening products, we would always look for things, not necessarily that were the best and most practical product, but something that was fun to watch on TV. And even if when things were scripted on the show and people would screw up, people want to watch. It's like the outtakes at the end of a movie. People stick around. They want to watch that stuff. So if Kathleen Gifford's taking an arm swipe and knocking down all these thermoses, Right, if it gets views, even if she did it just to be funny and not necessarily planning that out, right? But knowing that, hey, I'm gonna try this, let's see what happens. That's the stuff you remember. It's kind of like the cheesy commercial with the bad jingle that you, you wind up singing to yourself or humming all the time or something. That's the, that's the type of thing that people remember. And I think when people pitch you on products, right? It doesn't always, and you could tell me if I'm right or not, but people should send things to you that are fun, that are interesting, that are different. They may not necessarily solve a problem. They may just be fun to have or, or something you'd want to give to somebody else as like a funny kind of gift or something that could be useful. But do you tend to believe that when people submit things to you for, for this, for the Today Show, for example, that you are looking for things that are a little bit quirky or funny or fun? It, it, well, I, fun and funny are, you can't be funny. So that's always right. great. If it's really silly, you know, I mean, I don't think they want just silly things just cooked to, you know, silly glasses and light up. You know, it has to have some fit to right. whatever we're, we're doing that uh, for that segment. And it and I do need it to kind of at least solve a problem. But being silly is is never a mistake. Uh, and, and going back to that guy with the, with the when Kathy Lee Gifford threw those bottles all over the place, you know, he was freaked out. I mean, when I got off the segment, I had to talk him down. He's like, how could you do this to me? You know, you know, I have my life savings in this business. And I mean, he was really upset. And I was like, you know, I tried to talk him off the ledge saying, look, look, you know, it's not the end of the world. But I also just had to warn him that when you stick your neck out, you know, sometimes you get a kiss and sometimes you get slapped. You know, it can go either way. So, yeah. you know, maybe you got slapped a little bit, but also you should embrace this. You should say, hey, you know what? Why don't we challenge Kathy Lee to a, a, a slap down with the bottles? Or I said, you know, take that moment and maybe exploit it a little bit, which he didn't do, by the way. He didn't take my advice. But still, the YouTube segment continued to run. He's done very well. I've kind of kept touch with him and, and, and all's forgiven. But it, it, it was an awful feeling for him. And I even, I, you know, I could feel my phone vibrating. I was like, I knew I could feel his pain, you know, no matter how many miles away he was at the moment. But that's just the nature of, uh, of television. But again, you have to be prepared to, um, you know, it may not go the way you want, but then you're going to have to run with that, whatever that is. And, and, and really, as you were mentioning, Jim, that, you know, they do these real time research things where they sit you in a room and they show you how your segment does every once in a while, pretty rarely actually. And when things go badly, that's when viewers love it the most. So mistakes right. are great. I used to, no one remembers this. I'm going to be the only person who knows what I'm going to say. I'm, there's a guy named Stan Can. You don't know who he is, Carmen. You don't know who he is. But when I, and I, I loved this guy. He used to do gadgets on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Nobody knows who he is. Uh, but I totally remember him. And the segments always went terribly. And Johnny loved it. And I was hysterical at home and because you felt his pain. And I kind of like try to channel that a little bit. You know, if things don't go so smoothly or I um and oh or knock something over, it feels awful while it's happening. But I know it's not the worst thing in the world. And it's actually good television. So I don't do it on purpose ever. But, you know, it's, it, it, it's a way of kind of calming yourself down. Stan Cam would get through it. I can get through it. Too. Well, like you said, like Kathy Lee saying, just 
teaching you how to just be natural and enjoy the process and just pretend, well, not pretend, but try to forget that you're on TV and just do your thing and things will flow. If you, and you've got a good max and you're great on TV. So, and you've got a good personality and that makes for good TV for starters. But then if you can sort of be an expert in what, and you are, you're not just a guy who comes on who's doing gadgets, who knows nothing about product. You're a guy who knows all about product and then you're great on TV. That's a great recipe for potential success. And look, if I had my thing on there and it got knocked over and, and people were freaking out about it, and I'm getting a million views, I'm not crying about it, I can tell you right now. Not at all. <laughs> Absolutely. You're and you're the you're the, you know, either eight products there. You're the one that everyone's gonna remember. And that look years later, that's happened a long time ago. And it's still the product that runs around the market. Yeah, we're, we're talking about it right now. I mean, we're, we're talking about it right, about it right now. now, exactly. We're getting I, if I was a better uh, shill guy, I would, uh, you know, know the name of the product. I can't think of it. Right. I think I have one of my cabins over there, but it was, it was really a, uh, you know, a, gr a great moment. It's a great example of how things don't have to always go well, but yet they still can have, you know, work well at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Kathy Lee was always about, you know, you've got to be in the moment, you got to be in yourself and you can't take yourself too seriously, which I never have. Even when I was a news reporter, I always knew it was about the story, not me. And, you know, you always just do the best you can. That's all. Yeah, I agree. All right. So as we as we're getting towards the towards the end of the show here, it goes so quick. We always say this. Tell us about more about the Gadget Game Show and, you, and YouTube. How people can find it. What's going on? How it actually. Works, By the way, love, love the this show. It is the coolest. Yeah. I watch it. I laugh. Thank you. My butt off. And I and I hope the invention community will support it because it's another. If it does well and it gets picked up with a sponsor. It's another venue to showcase new products by garage inventors. And what it's called is, here's the shameless Second plug. Yeah. What the heck is that? <laughs> and then it's go to gadgetgameshow.com. So what it is, it's, it's these are 10 to 20 minute segments. It's sort of like Shark Tank meets What's My Line. You've got a panel and we put out a mystery gadget. It could be something like this, or it could be something like this. And then the panel asks 20 questions. You know, they ask yes or no questions to try to figure out what it is. Hopefully those at home, watching at home are doing the same thing. And you try to guess the product. And then it's, it's basically, it's the mystery gadget and, and revealed. In the future, maybe the show will grow. There'll be two teams and points and prizes. Mm -hmm. But right now it's just, you know, it is what it is. Just a, a hopefully a fun thing all done on Zoom. It, you know, I wanted to do a game show years before. Once we had Zoom and we were in lockdown, I had a lot of free time in my hands. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. So that's how it happened. So I'm even, I even made shirts. Oh, wow. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very official here. So if you go to gadgetgameshow.com, <laughs> click on uh, a couple of segments, watch it. Please subscribe. Please hit that little uh, bell on the corner so you get notified as we put up new segments. And tell your friends about it. I need subscribers. Because once I have enough subscribers, to be completely transparent, that's how I'm going to get a sponsor. So um, I'm, I'm counting it. You folks, you listeners, who can hear my voice, please check it out. What the heck is that? So uh, there That's it is awesome. right there. Awesome show. <laughs> and if you see Steve walking you know, down the road with that shirt on, go up and just scan his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> scan me. Scan me. Absolutely. <laughs> It's happened already. I, you know, it's been cold. I'm in New York right now, so I'm, I'm usually got a sweater and stuff on. But I, when I go to Florida, which I will do next week, I, I wear the shirt not all the time, but a lot. And I've been I've been scanned by a few people. <laughs> kind of an interesting experience. You don't get to say that too often. I've been scanned. <laughs> yeah. I've been scanned. I've been scanned. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been scanned. Yeah. Well, growing up in New York, right where I I lived most of my life, that's not unusual. But like here in Atlanta, if you're out in just out and about, I think that would be a weird approach. But hey, look, if, hey, send send me a shirt. I'll wear that thing around. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, you you got it. Well, I, I'm going to count on it. I, you got you got to bring in subscribers. I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely. Well, I'll, you know, of course, I'll send the pic with my me wearing the thing. So I'll wear it, and then I'll scan myself, and then I can just kind of go off and tell people. You know, I'll start with friends and family, right? That's what we do, and have people start yeah. scanning, and then we kind of branch out, walk into like a Target or a Walmart, and just kind of walk around and see what people do with it. I mean, why not, right? Well, and, and you know, the show's just been launched, so I haven't really done all the things I can do to really hype this up. But I'm I'm going to take a, I'm taking a YouTube class uh, to hopefully learn more YouTube skills as far as you know maximizing it. And but again, I think what I, I think word of mouth and just, you know, talking to people who care about it is, is a great help. And I really do think for inventors, this is like, you know, having another venue to showcase products 
is not a bad thing. And as far as looking to put products on there, if you are an inventor, you have a product that's actually for sale, and it's gotta be a mystery gadget where when you first look at it, you're like, huh, what the heck is that? If it has that kind of quality to it, then yeah, let me know about it. And if you go to that same website, gadgetgameshow.com, you scroll down and there's a way of contacting me and I'm, e I'm easy to find anyway. I'm on YouTube and on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Yeah, just wow. look for somebody wearing that shirt. You can find it. You know, right, Steve game show dot com. Yeah, there you I go. Mean, there you I, go. It actually, Steve, it has a good ring to it. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. Yeah. So that's, I, I, actually, I couldn't decide about the name, but what, what I did learn is that when I did pick, what the heck is that? Which is fun to say. Uh, I found that it, it's a little hard for people to, to type that in on the YouTube search and find it easily. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make a landing page website. Yeah. And I can use the other name, which I like. So and other names I like were Guess the Gadget. That was another one. Uh, Mystery Gadget. And then Gadget Game Show, I thought was simple to the point. So that's what I went for the, for the website. But the show's title is, there we go. What the heck is that? Yeah. Well, we will uh, we'll definitely be spreading the word for sure. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Sure. I, I just started like looking at watching it. So it's funny, like you said, like Carmine said, it's, <laughs> You look and, and you really are like, what, what, I, you know, really, what is that? Like, I'm still looking at that thing you keep showing. I still don't know. What and, and, and so it's like, that's what's that's so the, great is that, point. you know, you guys are gadget guys. So I'm always, I have to admit, I'm intimidated. Like my panel is, you know, they, they're in advertising and whatnot. So they have some credence, credentials, but I was like, I was worried. I had the guy on from USA Today going, now I can't think, oh, Jefferson Graham, who's been writing for about tech for a million years on USA Today. And he was on the show and I'm like, oh my God, he's gonna know the gadgets for sure. But nope, I'm able to fool him. So you don't know these two gadgets? Yep. One, one, one is a one is like a bag carrier holder, right? Right. That's what this is. That's what this is. And it's yeah, yeah. and and actually my panel got it pretty easily. Yeah. This one seems to looks like a, blow a, a lot of people. some kind of space edge stapler or something. Stapler is usually a first guess. So, so the way the game <laughs> would like go is you'd be asking yeah. me, you know, hold that up, Steve. Hold that up. Hold, hold that up. Hold that up. It's so yeah. It sort of looks like a something you'd use for your car, like a almost like a funky battery charging um, <laughs> power pack plant. I don't know. I mean, we're so not no doing batteries. Well, no and batteries, no plugging in, no cords, no, I mean, no electricity oh, involved in this thing. That... So this is a little string that's very important to how it works. I thought that was wiring, okay. And it, and it has a little circle at the end of it, which is actually kind of important to it. This piece is kind of just here. So I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. It has magnets connected. It's uh, using magnets. Mm. So. Is it for uh, like, like uh, ironing drapes? No, but you're getting warm. Wow. So this green piece is really just for storage of it. Uh, when it's working, you're not using this green piece. That's uh -huh. another hint. And then you've got this long cord. I'm going to give the answer away. You ready for the answer? Yeah. Okay. It's a magnetic window cleaner. I was a little just bit like about could... to say that. That was my next guess. I know. I, I know. Never... I know, Jim. I knew you knew it. It's, it's like, uh, like, you know, if you're a fish tank when you were a kid, yeah. I don't know if you remember, that's how. So the same thing it goes on your window. The outside is this one. So you and the, you string it around and you hang onto your finger in case you lose that connection. It doesn't fall down and kill somebody mm. if you're on the sixth floor like I am. Uh, and the other side and the inside, it's got a squeegee and then these cloths so you can wet up the window. And it's a great way. I use this gadget all the time to clean your windows. So uh, it's huh. a magnetic window cleaner. So wow. that's a that's a mini round of what it's like. Yeah, wow. Uh, that's crazy. And, and that one's actually in one of the, one of the episodes. So you'll find it. Oh, I don't that's know, so Which episode fun. number you'll find. Very cool. Wow. Hey, Steve, seriously, this is like, we're, we're definitely going to get the word. It is fun. It's different. This this is a business that everybody's gets very, like we said, very emotional, very serious about. But being on TV, I don't care if it's, and, and YouTube is TV today. I mean, that's where, I mean, my kids, all they do, they're on like YouTube and stuff. Like, they don't, course, they, don't yeah. watch, they watch, they're on their phones more than they're on, they don't watch regular TV at all, hardly. So this is where it's at. But we love this and, and we're really happy that you were able to, you know, with your, your busy TV schedule to come on our show here, our little show, but I'm, we... I'm beyond honored to be on it, honestly. <laughs> and you guys are doing, you guys are doing a great job. I, I, I'm a, not only a participant now, but I'm a viewer as well. I'm a big fan. And frankly, you know, the invention community needs this stuff to kind of pull us all together. Cause you know, it's as opposed to other groups where there's some kind of 
common, there, there really is almost no common factor. You know, you can be six years old, 106 years old, you can be from this part of the country, that part of the country, but we have this one thing in common. And I think, you know, it's so important to do things that kind of pull us all together. So yeah. whether it's your podcast or the game show or whatever, I think it's, it's, it's great. So yeah. uh, we, uh, we appreciate it. We do. We, we yeah. really feel like all of us, like we, we say all the time when we have people like you on industry icons, really, that have always done really great things for this business. Nobody's out there trying to do anything other than help people and educate them. And then people have more knowledge and we that's how we get more success in this business and, and and that's more fun success is more fun than failing especially when there's dollars and cents involved so steve we really really appreciate it i know carmine's going to take us home here in a second but uh we'll we'll have to have you back on in a handful of weeks to follow up and see how things are going if you want i would love, love to have it. you back and anytime yeah, we'll, you guys want give me a shout and i'm, I'm back not i'm not, um, happy to do it and and please subscribe and one more, one goes. more plug. Come on, hold that thing up. One more. You go. Let's go. Here we go. I hope someone's tracking how many times I do this. What the heck is that? Gadgetgameshow.com. Check it out. Tell your friends. <laughs> subscribe. Hit that little bell. <laughs> help me, help me help you. Help me help you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. All you listeners out there, please go on out to GadgetGameShow.com. Watch. What the heck is that? It is actually an awesome show. I do love it. It is pretty cool. Because sometimes, even like Jim, like Steve and Jim, we were talking about it. I should know what those products are, and I can't figure them out. Oh, yeah. and it, it's frustrating out. sometimes, and that's what makes the show so fun. much fun. It's fun. I, uh, I, I thank Steve again for being on today. It was so much fun talking to him. For Mr. Jim DeBetter, for myself, Carmen Disco, we thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time on Get Retail Ready with Mr. Jim DeBetter. You all take care.